So in a dating situation, like if a woman is feeling frustrated because the man never really plans anything for a date, just as an example, Great and she'd example. like for him to plan, you know, when he shows up and says, oh, so what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Women love a man with a plan. So yeah, how exactly. much do you encourage how much she encourage him in that way? Okay. So that's what men have to learn is women love a man with a plan. And what women have to learn is they have to help him make the plan. So basically on Friday, let's say he says, uh, he comes over Friday night or he calls us, oh, what do you want to do tonight? That's the most unromantic thing a man can do, but men don't know that. Uh, so what you would do, since that's what he did, you would accept that's what he did. And while you're together that night, well, let's hang out and let's, let's, look, at, uh, let's look at the newspaper and plan what we're going to do next week. That's what you do. If he's going to hang out, okay, we're going to take this time to hang out. We'll sit and watch TV. And during that time, we bring out something and you say, you know, I was looking in the newspaper, I was looking online, and I was thinking next week we could do some really fun stuff. Like we could do this. We could go to this uh, art gallery. We could go to this walk. You know, they're having a, a, a walk onto the mountain on that day. The weather's going to be really good. And, or we could go, you know, have a, there's this restaurant I heard about. We could have dinner there. So what you do as a woman, your job in making a plan, it's not all up to the man, okay? Your job is to let him know options that you would like to do and when you'd like to do them. His job is then to pick one of those options and follow through and provide it. So he's, and then he says, well, will you think about it and plan one of these things? And what do you think we should do? You go to him and you say, what do you think we should do? And whatever one he picks, you agree with, it's okay, you know? Uh, will you get the tickets? Are you, will you arrange the tickets? And are, would, uh, what should I do? Kind of put it in his hand to organize it. And what happens then is he now owns the date so that when you're happy on the date, he takes credit for it. His testosterone goes up and your estrogen goes up because you didn't have to organize your plan. But what you had to do is inform him of what you'd like to do. One of the, uh, out of date idea that women have when it comes to romance is that men should know what you want, men should do it all on their own. And certainly on a date in the beginning, a man works really hard to think, what, what can I do to please or whatever? And he'll do one or two things that he knows work. But that, after that, it's, he doesn't know what else. It's up to her to let him know the things she'd like to do. It's up to him to pick and provide. And so, mm -hmm. would you organize that? And maybe what you could do, even when you're saying, would you organize that? I will do this, and would you do that? So you let him know what you'd like him to do. And you can always throw in a little bit of, I'll do this. You know, if it's a picnic on the mountain or going to the mountain play here, you'd say, well, I'll make, the vic I I I'll make a lunch for us. W would you get the tickets and organize transportation? So you basically, those are all requests. That's your participation in a date is to know what you'd like, give him choices so it's not just, what doesn't feel very romantic or good is to say, you know, there's the mountain play this weekend. Will you take me next weekend? Then he's doing what you, he's sort of, you're in charge and you're controlling the whole thing. And it's not really his gift to you. So you always want to give him choices that he picks. So, you, oh, there's a mountain play this weekend. That'll be really fun. Or go to the, the art gallery or we could go for that walk on the mountain. Uh, what do you think we should do? And put it in his hand. And then whatever he says, you're training him now. You go, okay, great idea. Let's do that. Now, let's say you really, really want to go to the mountain play. Well, occasionally you can just control it and do that. But the bottom line is you want to create a context where you, he experiences taking charge, being responsible, doing things for you, and having it pay off really good. And part of the job there for you, and this is how women unknowingly kill romance, is you know she says, oh, let's go to the mountain play. And then you go, and then you go, oh, that was off. I didn't really like it. <laughs> you complain about it. <laughs> then he feels like, well, then you figure out everything next time. Uh, you know, he, he just starts giving up the initiative to provide things because he might say, let's go and do this. And you go on the date and you're just having conversation. Let's say I take you to a restaurant and the, and the, and the, the food's not that great. It's just conversation for two women going to a restaurant to talk about how bad the food is. There's no problem with that. But on a romantic date, you don't talk about how bad the food is. Your focus as a woman is to talk about what's good about the date. His focus is to provide the date and get the encouragement that he's successful. That's your whole goal on a date is to give him the message. He took initiative. He should always be appreciated for that. 
And if you want to talk about, I don't want to go back to that restaurant again, you could do that on another day as a casual comment. But there's something delicate about romantic dates where a woman's sensitivity needs to be not to give negative messages about what's happening, but to be extremely appreciative, accepting. And he's trying to do his best by planning something and doing something. And he's encouraged when he feels, I have the power to make you happy. I'm not saying you have to always be, you know, this whole thing where women have to smile and be happy and all the time. You don't have to smile and be happy all the time. But if it's a romantic date, that's a time to put your best foot forward. And we all know that we can do that. You go for a job interview, you're going to naturally put your best foot forward. That's not the time to complain or talk about, you know, what's not working. You talk about your best self, you know, in, a, in an interview, they say, well, what are your, what are your most challenging aspects as a person? You know, yeah. what, what, are, what are your weaknesses? You don't tell them your weaknesses. You say, well, I think my weakness is I give too much. I work too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's your weakness. I mean, every job, every, every interviewer goes, great. That's what I want. Somebody who works too hard for me. But you, you don't say all your issues and you, you try to minimize that. So we have the ability, kind of like a woman's purse, you can pull out all kind of different stuff. It can be there. You don't have to empty the whole thing. So on a romantic date, that's when you focus on being your best, most loving self, your most tolerant self, the most accepting self. And that's where a man will reciprocate in kind by being most considerate, most understanding, most supportive, and so forth. This is the, where we put on our fancy outfits and go out on something romantic. And of course, the best thing is the great sex that could come from it. Because if a man is taking care of you, respecting your wishes, providing you what you want, not what he wants, but what you want, that will help increase your estrogen so that you can then have great sex afterwards or in the morning after, whichever it might be. Yeah, thank you so much, John. I know you've been so generous with your time, and this has been absolute gold for this audience. I can't wait to share what you have shared today with the audience. And, and as I mentioned earlier, I really want to thank you both personally and professionally for your work and for your contribution. It really means a lot, and I really appreciate your generosity. Well, thank you so much. And I, I always like to remind people, because they know me as men are from Mars, women are from Venus, but all of this hormone stuff and sex stuff and romance that I've been talking about in this show is in the new book, Beyond Mars and Venus. It's, it, the Minute from Mars will always be a classic, but Beyond Mars and Venus gives us this additional information. And in addition, it also helps us to understand how you know, certain Chinese herbs can help restore the balance of hormones because we're always fighting against this environmental toxicity that lowers testosterone in men, lowers estrogen in women, and there's, there's RX for women, which helps hormonal balance for women without having to take hormones. There's Tonkat Ali, which helps to bump up a man's testosterone levels, even help a woman with her libido as well. But more importantly is the estrogen side of that for women. There's something called uh, Super Minerals for Women uh, that I have at my website, which have the cofactors for making more serotonin in the brain so your mind doesn't do the looping. The, the physical side of this can be so helpful in applying the ideas that I've been talking about to achieve balance. The difference between drugs and natural support is that natural support works if you're moving in the direction of the right behaviors. But the uh, drugs will just affect you. They change you. And it's not really authentic or real. And that you always go out of balance as a result in the side effect. But natural supplements can help to find the physical support to make it easier to make these hormonal shifts inside yourself. Thank you so much, John. I, I'm really grateful that you've shared this because I think it can be so valuable, especially for this age group and this audience of women where we're going through a lot of different hormonal changes and that sort of thing naturally in the body. And yeah, so I'm really grateful for your wisdom and, and knowledge on this subject. And yes, ladies, make sure you check out John's book, Beyond Mars and Venus, and also uh, all kinds of resources and the supplements and things that he's talked about are available at marsvenus.com. So again, John, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to connect with you again and my honor to interview you once again. And I really appreciate your generosity and, and the way you always show up. You're not only generous in your knowledge, but generous of spirit. I've always just found you to be so gracious. So thank you for that. It's my honor. Thank you.